the vanishing in. I stumbled upon the ghost town of Ashbrook during a road trip through the desolate Midwest. The town appeared suddenly, its abandoned buildings standing as silent sentinels to a forgotten era. Intrigued, I decided to explore. As I walked down the main street, I spotted an old inn, its sign swinging eerily in the wind. The building was weathered and crumbling, but the door creaked open as if inviting me in. Inside, the air was heavy with the scent of decay. I made my way to the front desk, where a ledger lay open. The last entry was dated over a century ago. Dusty keys hung on hooks behind the desk, and I couldn't resist the urge to take one. It was labelled Room 13. I ascended the creaking staircase to the second floor and found room 13. The door swung open easily, revealing a room untouched by time. The furniture was draped in white sheets and a layer of dust coated every surface. I settled into an old armchair, the springs groaning beneath my weight. As I looked around, I noticed a figure standing in the corner of the room a young woman. Her eyes vacant, her dress tattered and blood-stained. She approached slowly, her footsteps making no sound. Her face contorted in anguish and she whispered, You shouldn't be here. Before I could react, she reached out and touched my shoulder. A searing pain shot through me and the room began to spin. I heard her voice, faint and distant, as if coming from another realm. She spoke of a tragedy that had befallen the inn, a fire that had claimed the lives of all its guests. I woke back in my car, parked outside the ghost town. The inn had vanished, as if it had never existed. But the pain in my shoulder remained, a reminder of the spectral encounter. Ashbrook had revealed its darkest secrets, and I knew I would never forget the vanishing inn and the tortured soul that lingered within. The Silent Residence My fascination with ghost towns led me to the forgotten settlement of Whispering Pines the town was nestled deep in a dense forest, its houses and streets reclaimed by nature. As I explored, I couldn't help but feel the weight of the past. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows over the abandoned buildings. I decided to spend the night in one of the old houses, seeking shelter from the encroaching darkness. I entered a two-story home that appeared to have been frozen in time. Dusty furniture lined the living room and old family portraits adorned the walls. The air was thick with the silence of a place untouched by the living for decades. I climbed the creaky stairs to the second floor and found a bedroom with an old, rickety bed. Exhausted from my exploration, I lay down and closed my eyes. That's when I heard it the faint, mournful whispering. I sat up, scanning the room for the source of the sound. It seemed to emanate from the walls themselves. The voices were indistinct, like a chorus of the departed. Their words filled with longing and despair. As the whispers grew louder, I could make out fragments of stories a lost love. A tragic accident lives cut short. It was as if the very walls held the memories and secrets of the town's former residents. I ventured into the hallway, following the voices, 
and found a room at the end of the corridor. The door swung open with a soft, eerie creak, revealing a small, dusty nursery. Faded toys lay scattered on the floor, and the walls were adorned with drawings of children. In the centre of the room stood a crib, its wooden frame weathered with age. As I approached, the whispers grew loud, and I realised they were coming from within the crib. I peered inside and gasped. A spectral figure lay in the crib, an infant, its eyes fixed on me, its tiny hand reaching out. It was as if the soul of a long-lost child lingered in this room, trapped in a timeless existence. I fled the house, the haunting whispers still echoing in my ears. As I left whispering pines behind, I couldn't help but wonder about the silent residents, who had once called this ghost town home, their voices forever etched into the walls. The Silent Residents I'd always been drawn to the mysteries of abandoned places, and my journey led me to the ghost town of Silver Hollow. The town was nestled in a valley, its dilapidated buildings bathed in the eerie light of twilight. I arrived as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows that stretched across the empty streets. As I explored, I noticed a faint glow emanating from the town square. Curiosity got the better of me, and I followed the ethereal light. In the centre of the square, I found a gathering a congregation of ghostly figures, their forms flickering like shadows in the dying light. They moved silently, their eyes fixed on an old, decrepit gazebo at the square centre. I approached cautiously, my heart pounding, and watched as the spectral figures began to sway. Their movements synchronised in a haunting dance. There was an otherworldly beauty to their movements, a sense of melancholic grace. As I watched, I realised that the figures were dressed in attire from a bygone era the women in elegant dresses. The men in suits and top hats, they moved with a sense of purpose, their movements telling a story of longing and sorrow. That's when I heard the music a haunting melody that seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere at once. It filled the square, surrounding me in its mournful refrain. It was as if the very air itself was alive with the sound. I couldn't tear my eyes away from the ghostly gathering. They danced on, lost in their eternal twilight ritual, their faces filled with a quiet, yearning sadness. It was as if they were trapped in a never-ending moment reliving a past that could never be. I watched until the last glimmers of twilight faded and the spectral figures disappeared into the night. The music lingered in the air, a fading echo of their timeless dance. As I left Silver Hollow behind, I couldn't help but wonder about the history and tragedy that had given rise to this haunting twilight gathering. A reminder that even in a ghost town, the past never truly rests in peace. 